everybody, my name is Abbas and I'm reporting for First Updates Now. Today we have Team 12835 Pixelated for a Behind the Bot interview. They have gone 4-0 and so far at MTI and they're looking to be a very strong team. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you guys have the second highest average. So even though you haven't played five matches like other teams, you are going to be ranked second, hopefully, if everything continues as it's predicted. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Apply the skills you gain as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support first teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. Ben, let's start with your uh, drivetrain. I noticed you guys don't, you guys aren't running the standard like eighth inch aluminum for your drive plates. You guys seem to be running wood or some other material. Do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah. decision? Yeah, so at the beginning of the season in our strategy, we wanted to make sure that we could be as skinny as possible so that we could fit between the barriers. And so this decided, or this directed us in a path to uh, using materials that are strong, such as carbon fiber and lightweight as well, with carbon fiber and uh, plywood. So our drivetrain, it's very simple. It's just a, it's a lifted standard drivetrain and we're using the, uh, the new Go Build a Mechanum wheels, which are thin, which allows us to stay nice and skinny. And so moving over to our, I guess, intake process yeah. uh, on this side of the road, uh, we wanted to make sure that we could be able to store intake at the beginning so that we're within the size requirements and also be able to reach into the corners and be able to do this very effectively at the same time. So, as an example, we have this cube right here. It goes in there nicely. Uh, we wanted to keep it nice and simple, uh, going straight from the intake into our depositor manipulator. Yeah, no, that's uh, really awesome. And, you know, intakes, was your intake, it's so smooth and so efficient. Was it something that you guys just got, like, one and done right on the first time, or is it something that went through a couple of iterations? Well, our intake, this is, I believe, the fifth generation of intake. So, obviously, going through the engineering process, we did a lot of testing and fine-tuning to get the most optimized final design, and this is what we have, final design. Yeah, and, you know, speaking of the engineering design process, do you guys use any CAD software? Do you model your robots beforehand, or, or is it just like free build sketches, that yes. type of thing? so we are profound creatures of CAD. Okay. We designed this entire thing before uh, we manufactured all of the final pieces. Obviously, we did some prototyping with some basic materials, like that was kind of a little bit to, to get the concept. Sure, right. sure. And then we went through and designed everything before we even started building, and now we have our final robot. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hand it off and talk about the other systems of your robot. I'd like to start with your carousel mechanism. You know, you guys have a super efficient duct cycling system that I've seen very versatile carousel mechanism. Was it like this the entire season or has it evolved? Uh, at the beginning of the season, we were trying to figure out the most efficient way to do this. A lot of teams now, uh, you see them with like one or two wheels on the corner of their robot because it just is what they came up with. It's a super simple design. Uh, but we actually didn't have that much space because like Ben was talking about, we wanted to keep our robot as uh, thin as sleek and sleek as possible. So we ended up uh, designing a, uh, or an arm that is uh, connected in the center of the robot, which then can be rotated to either position because of the servo. Uh, this also allows us to change the angle of the robot can, or when it's on the carousel because sometimes you might be in the wrong position and you want to readjust how you are. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the most unique and like important parts of your robot is your extension. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about like what went through it into the season and how it came to be what it is now? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. It is one of the most important uh, parts of our robot. Uh, our lift definitely went through a lot of iterations because it's so crucial. Um, so how we have it right now, it's um, five or six stacks of um, Asumi SAR3 um, slides that extend uh, five feet out of the robot, uh, which, as you mentioned earlier, earlier, enables us to duck cycle in endgame. So we use both our carousel manipulator and our lift to be able to extend all the way over to the, car uh, to the alliance hub while we're scoring ducks on the carousel. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, one thing I want to talk about in your extension, it seems like there's very little uh, like bending of your slides. I would expect something that's like this far out and like you know this long of a lever arm would really put a lot of force and torque uh, yeah. at the base. And I noticed you guys have this cable right here. Do you want to talk about what
about what it does? Yeah, so I'll pass it off to Colden for that. Um. Okay, hey, uh, for our robot, since uh, we actually don't have a um, our extension system, our, our cable to retract our extension system, our, our pulley system actually mounted to the slides. Uh, this angle changes, so this uh, a retraction cable actually gets a lot of slack in it when we're running, uh, which slack is never good in a robot. Uh, so what we ended up the designing is a tension cam, <coughs> which I uh, found out, or I. I was uh, drawing up different things to use, and then I thought of a compound bow and how it has a cam on it to actually pick up all the other string. Originally, what we had um, was just a linear spring, which we found was too bulky and didn't actually maintain the string as well as we would like. So uh, by adding a, um, a torsion spring to this 3D print, we're able to pick up the full circular force or circular amount of the cable. Wow, yeah, I mean, that's really just super ingenious, super clever, and it's been working really well, right? Yeah. Your, your guys' slide just seems every couple of seconds in and out, in and out, cycle after cycle. And, I mean, your robot is very impressive, not only in the hardware, but the software as well. I'm sure you guys have a lot of automations, things going into it, making sure you can do as many cycles as you do in the autonomous and teleop period. So why don't we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, several different driver-controlled enhancements that we use throughout the match. Um, namely is our freight detection. So in the uh, inside of our robot we have a um, a color sensor. We use the distance sensor, sensor distance functionality of the color sensor uh, to determine when there's freight inside of our robot. And once freight is inside of our robot, we have a lock on the top of our depositor. So once it senses that a freight has been collected, the lock closes, which enables us to maintain that um, freight inside of our robot for the remainder of its journey until it's scored, uh, which helps both while we're driving and while we're extending, because we make really rapid lift motions and we don't want to be losing freight, because that's bad. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, I've seen you guys just put cycle after cycle in the autonomous period into the high level of the aligned shipping hub. So how do you guys make sure you're super consistent in your autonomous motions? You know, you don't slip a lot or you don't like turn off angle or anything like that. Yeah, definitely. So for auto, we use a um, combination of Roadrunner and a couple other tools uh, to ensure that um, our localization is good throughout the entire match. Um, and yeah, and we use uh, freight detection, like I mentioned, so that we're not you know, like plowing straight into the crater and, you know, messing up our paths or anything. Um, and we use a couple other tools, uh, like uh, we have a through bore encoder on our uh, extension system, uh, which allows us to keep more accurate um, positioning of our lift instead of just using the motor encoder that's attached. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Pixelated. I think teams have a lot to learn from you guys, especially about optimizing your robots, following through with the engineering design process, and seeing how that results in such a high-scoring, lightweight, really just efficient scoring machine. Thank you. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm a boss. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. Apply the skills you gained as a FIRST student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in FIRST because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.